We've all probably seen code that looks something like this in which an object is created if ops is not provided. And then we create this config option as a series of merges between a brand new empty object, the default values and the options passed in. There's also other variations of this exact same thing. You can think of prop spreading in React, all that. There's always some form of object creation or spreading or copying that goes on in JavaScript. It's very frequent. I don't know what it is, but I emotionally can't handle seeing objects ever being created, even in like the medium path, not even the hot path. And let's do an entire video why that hurts me, okay? Why that hurts me deep down. <clears throat> and yes, you'll notice that there's some crap all over my hoodie. I was making some dough with my kids for their volcano project, okay? So this is called being a dad, okay? This is a dad, dad bod, dad life. Just between me and you, I even get a little bit like, ooh, whenever I use array.map or filter because I know I'm creating a closure, I know I'm creating a new array, and it does hurt me a little bit. I know it's silly, but it does. For me, it hurts. All right, so let's actually look at this code for a quick second. So what is going on here? Well, what's actually happening is we're creating an empty object. Then we are going to merge all the keys of our default values into this object. Now, this is done, obviously, in C++, so it's pretty fast. But nonetheless, key references and value references have to be stored now in this new object container. And after that, all the options from the past and option then have to be stored in there as well and overwritten. Now, this object has to live, but how long does it have to live? Well, V8 has this algorithm called Mark and sweep. If you want to know more about mark and sweep and how it exactly works, you can check the description down below. And as you scroll down to that link, why aren't you hitting the like button on the way down? It's so convenient. It's there. It's like literally, it's right there. So just press it. Okay, back to code. Obviously, we also create a closure here in which closes over the convict value and any other values that are above this function that you refer to inside of this closure. So that means we probably have some sort of function arrow function object that gets created. We get some sort of closure that's wrapping the value that is the container of the things that are created. We also get this many objects being created right here. All of these have to be held on to V8 and their life cycles have to be determined when they can be cleaned up. It's a lot of stuff. Now you hopefully see why objects and copying emotionally hurts me. But seriously, man, it's functional. F you and your functional, okay? That's what I have to say. <laughs> is that too much? <laughs> is that the part that I just finally crossed the line? I will unsubscribe from this channel right now. Okay, do it. Then re-hit that button. And you can too who's not even subscribed. Go ahead, press it right now. Let's make an experiment in which we test the performance of garbage collection and creation. It's pretty darn simple. First off, this function just creates new objects, either with five properties or 10 properties, depending on what value I pass in up here. The fourth argument, well, technically the fifth argument, the fourth indeceed argument into this program. After that, I have this little copying function that goes on right here that actually just passes the props from one of these objects to another object. So instead of just explicitly copying, I'm moving over properties one at a time. Obviously, this looks way less efficient than three dots. Spread it ship it. Lastly, I created this very simple object store in which if you try to get and there's some items left, we'll grab and use an item out of the pool. And when you're done using it, call this function and it will return those items one at a time back into the pool, increasing, of course, the length right there. <laughs> Based on prop count, we either create an object store with the factory function of an object prop 10, and we have a copying function, copy 10 or copy 5. Okay, so you kind of see what's happening here. And lastly, the kind of the crux of this experiment, even though I think lastly I set it up there. But anyways, this is kind of like the crux of the experiment. Either we spread the prop or we cache this object and we keep track of its life cycle and we move the props over one at a time and copy them into new places. After that, we just do something pretty dang simple. Every 100 milliseconds, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna release all the objects I have created up to this point and either release them back into the object pool or just simply erase references to them and let garbage collection handle them later. And then right here, I create about 100 objects at a time and I increment my total count by 100 objects. And if 100 milliseconds gone by, we do the thing. You've already heard about that. And then we just run. We run until collect has been called a certain amount of times and then it will stop. Hopefully that all makes sense. I know that was quick, but there's a point to this experiment, right? Either A, I create a new object and then spread it into new objects over and over again, 
or B, I create a new object whenever I don't have any more inside my object store and then spread props into it one at a time via a function I call copy five or 10. All right, let's get to the results. Let's get to the results. I know you wanna see them. So what I'm gonna run here, of course, is going to be style zero. That means just use prop spreading. Uh, we're gonna do 200 runs through that 100 millisecond and we're gonna use 10 prop objects. All right, so let's look at the results right here. We ran for effectively 20 seconds. We created this many objects and we had about 4,600 objects per millisecond created. That's pretty damn fast or could be fast. All right, let's do it again, except for this time, let's use style one. Again, we ran for an extra couple milliseconds right there. We literally created almost 10 times the amount of objects, or in other words, reuse those objects, which ended up meaning that we were doing about 24.6 thousand objects per millisecond. Yes, I do know that was a micro benchmark ran on my computer. And right now I'm listening to weeb music in my headset while we are running those. But when it comes to these type of benchmarks, if they were close at all, I would have been a lot more worried and I would have probably re-ran them, did something, or it really shows that it doesn't matter that much. But we're talking six, seven, eight X faster. So directionally, it is significantly faster to not let V8 use the garbage collection mechanism if you do not have have to. So I'm actually going to rerun this again, but this time with the inspector attached, and we're going to do 2,000 so runs for a long time, approximately 200 seconds. All right, so let's just start recording. Obviously, we're on the profiler tab, so we can kind of see what's happening within our program. All right, when we stop it, what you're going to see is all these little gray lines here, and each one of those gray lines represent garbage collection. While garbage collection is running, your program cannot do anything. Yes, there are some scavenges and some various things that VA can do off-thread, but this part is just like, sorry, you're done, you're stopped, you can't do anything. And when you highlight over it, you'll notice something, that the self-time of this one function is 19 milliseconds, but the aggregated total time of all of these functions is almost seven seconds. And we let this thing run for like, what, nine and a half seconds? That means we're only running about 22% of the time. The rest of the time is garbage collection. All right, let's rerun it. But this time with our little object pooling strategy, jump back over here, re-record this sweetness. Yes, I'm using a mouse. Don't tell my mother, okay? <laughs> I don't think she would like that. Boom. What do you see here? You don't see very much garbage. I, who knows what happened right here? Obviously, something went wrong there. But nonetheless, like very little anything is going on within the program. And look at this. A huge amount of time is spent within this right here. We spent a lot of time, 500 milliseconds, recollecting these objects. But that is certainly better than the seven seconds spent garbage collecting in the other program. All right, so before you just run out there and start implementing these things, okay, I, I want you to hold on, okay? I want you to hold on and I want you to listen to me for a second, okay? Listen to me. Do you see how crispy that camera looks right here? Why do I look so blurry? Nobody even knows. I suck at AV, okay? I suck at it. I suck at it. Oh, por que Maria? Por que Maria? Ooh. So first thing you need to know is that obviously it is a lot faster, but you got to put it in terms of something that makes more sense, right? If your program is doing a lot of stuff, is garbage collection really affecting it? So profiling, it would be a very first good step. How much time proportionally are you spending in garbage collection? Is a 10% win worth some complication? It very well could be. If you have hundreds of servers running in production, a 10% win is real money. But personally, I would not probably do anything like this if it's not on the server or in a library. Because a library, you tend to know the life cycle of your objects. You're kind of guaranteeing that no one on the outside has access to them. You know what you're doing. Also on the server, you could imagine something like Fastify. It has these request response bodies that it's constantly dishing out. A simple caching of those objects could be a really good performance win for Fastify. Somebody tweet Mateo right now. Don't say it's from me. You can you can take credit, okay? You can take credit and give him this great idea. But again, I do want to say that this strategy is very complicated and should not be your first reach for server performance. It should be one of your later reaches. Profile your server. Find out what's slow. Fix the slow. If that's not working, start looking at memory. So I actually have used this strategy more than once at Netflix. I recently improved the performance of a tool by about 50% by ditching promises, which create tons of memory, and instead having a series of defined functions as like a kind of like this step that you'd walk through. And it's because with promises, I was spending about 20% of the time in garbage collection. And so by just removing that, the program flew so dang fast. And of course, promises, there's also other problems 
problems with it and performance, but you get the idea. I hope that you enjoyed this. I know this was a fairly technical one. Tell me what you think about it, because I often don't show that much code. Do you like it? Did you hit the subscribe button? Have you pressed the like button? Are you sending me those algorithmic signs? Yes or no? And have you joined the Discord? If you haven't joined the Discord, you're weak. Probably don't even see you on Twitch. You probably are off there flapping your gums, telling me all about why Go is the greatest language. I mean, it's a pretty good language. It's pretty good. I'd give it two thumbs up. The name is the Primogen.